Okay, so what do we've got here? We've got a point B and a point A. The distance between them is D. Um, basically, we're going to project two particles um, just in straight lines. So not like not like projectiles, but like we're just gonna just gonna shoot them off here, um, like that. Okay. Um, so P particle P is at A, and it's gonna be shot off with constant acceleration A, and we're given this angle is um, oh whoops I've got B and A the other way around. Oops. Oh well. It's beta. Um, now we're, we're we're told particle B or uh, particle particle Q is as has, has constant speed V, so it's shot off with constant speed. There's no acceleration there, and we're going to consider that there's a collision. Suppose that there's a collision, um, and then we have to show that if if a collision is possible, there's an inequality that's satisfied considering beta. Well, if we can choose the direction of Q such as a collision. Uh, remember that both these particles are sharding at the same time, then there must exist some angle alpha, right? So at a certain time, at t equals, I don't know, capital T, let's call the time where they collide capital T, um, there exists an alpha such that the following holes, right? Um, this means that the, uh, the horizontal displacements are going to be the same. Okay, and it also means, well, the magnitude of the horizontal displacement is the same. This also means that the magnitude of both vertical displacements are going to add to give D, right? The distance, the vertical distance that they were, they were apart, right? So, so at some point T, the distance traveled by uh, particle A plus the distance traveled vertically by particle B must equal the distance that they're apart at the start, right, if there's a collision. And also the horizontal distance traveled must be equal, i.e. they're at the same point. So at the same time, they're at the same point. That's what a collision is. So let me just write that out. So calculating YA, so this is the displacement of um, the, the vertical distance of particle A, which um, isn't too bad, right? This is just going to be V cos alpha times T. Um, so the vertical displacement of B then, well, that's um, using using SUVAT, we see that if this is A and, you know, it starts with um, speed zero, then it's just, we'll use the equation UT plus a half AT squared. We know that U is zero, so as is just a half AT squared, right? So, so a half acceleration times time squared. And we're going to take the component of the acceleration in the vertical direction, so this is just going to be cos... A cos beta times t squared is d. And similarly, um, to show that the uh, horizontal thingies are equal, um, yeah, then it's v sine beta t plus a half a sine uh, beta. Um, sorry, this is alpha. Bit confusing. There's a lot of letters here. <laughs> t squared is D. Okay, so if an alpha exists, what can we say? Well, notice that this inequality doesn't have an alpha in it, first of all. So we're looking for a clever trick to eliminate alpha. And um, if you know your cos and sine rules, you're going to spot one. Basically, make this the subject here. And uh, make this the subject here. I I've just wrote out the same thing twice. Hang on. That's what I meant to say. Yes, <laughs> okay. So make this a subject, make this a subject, and uh, you know the sum of the squares of them must equal v squared t squared, right? So in other words, um, that's a half a sine beta t squared squared plus this looks like d minus a half a cos beta t squared, all squared, okay, so summing, summing those guys will give me vt squared, right, why is that, well, because r sine theta, all of that squared, plus r cos theta, 
squared is r squared, right? It's like that identity, they're equal one, but you're factoring out the square term. So that makes sense, right? Now notice that um, I have this, this other sign beta term squared, and I'm gonna have a cos beta term squared when I expand this out. Um, and they're gonna, again, collect give one. So that's gonna give me a quarter a squared t to the four. Okay, and then I'm gonna have a minus, what it looks like, a d cos beta t squared. And then um, plus d squared equals v squared t squared. Okay, so what is this anyway? What relationship have I got? Well, it's not quite the inequality I was looking for, but it's some quadratic. Um, and also notice that there's no t squared in this. And again, that tells you, okay, well, maybe eliminate t squared or something, but let's just stop. Um, and use that old C close adage. Let's just stop doing maths for a second and let's just think about what we're doing. What is this? Well, it's it's a quartic in T or a quadratic in disguise in T, um, which, well, well, so what? It's a quadratic in at the time of collision. Um, well, I guess that it must have at least like one solution if the particles do collide. And hang on a minute, ah. Now we see that, well, if we consider the roots of this equation, then it must have real roots, right? If there is a collision. And if it doesn't have real roots, then there can't be a collision. That's very interesting. Okay, so rearranging this. Quarter a squared t to the 4 minus, what's this, v squared plus a d cos beta t squared plus d squared is zero. So this is a quadratic into t squared. Okay, so for, for real roots here, the discriminant must be bigger than zero. Um, what could I denote this term as to make things easier? I don't know, let's call it, I don't know, anything you want. Um, what letter do I want to use today? Uh, let's call it, no, maybe, Maybe a capital, because mm, we keep using stuff, don't we? Hmm. I love the way this is the part I'm stuck at. I don't know what to call this. Uh, let's use the Greek letter psi. Yeah, why not? So if we let this be psi, then t squared is going to be psi. So min minus psi, right? Which is minus you know, this is this thing is psi, so this is negative b, so that's that's fine. Plus or minus the square root of psi squared minus four times a times c, which is gonna be a squared d squared all over two a. In other words, divided by a half a squared. Okay, so that's t squared. We, we know at least t squared is not imaginary, right? So we know at least phi squared minus a d squared must be greater than or equal to zero. That would be nice. And what have we got here, actually? That ends up being exactly the inequality we want, doesn't it? If we just, uh, I guess, rearrange that or whatever... Um, we're going to get exactly that now. How am I going to do this? I'm going to say phi squared must be greater than or equal to AD all squared. What is phi squared? I don't really know. Don't, I don't really want to calculate it. We could square root this, but we got to be careful. This means that um, phi is bigger than AD. They're both positive, right? Or or it's less than minus AD, is that right? Or like neg negative, if phi is negative, so let's just consider, are they positive or negative? How about that? Well, AD, um, A is uh, acceleration, it's positive, D is just positive, right? So, so we're assuming both are positive, what is phi? Could phi be negative? Could phi be negative? Well, phi could be negative if, um, if AD 
cos beta was like more negative than like it, it was negative but it would have to be bigger than v squared and negativity if that makes sense so if if this is negative it could be because beta is beta acute fixed bearing beta so maybe not it could possibly be negative um, notice we can just we can just say straight away that phi greater than ad um, will indeed give us the the inequality we want. We just have to can you, just, you know you just have to be careful. Show show the examiners that you're just you know considering the inequalities appropriately. You're not just blindly taking the square root. So what's that? That's like ad ad is definitely positive. Cos beta might be negative. Um, could cos beta be greater than than c squared? Well, it could be. Could be really negative, couldn't it? But if it was, then it might be. I don't know. You can think about that in your own time. <laughs> I, I'm having a brain fart here with these inequalities. I'm just going to move on. Um, okay. Show further if v squared is greater than ad. Blah, blah, blah. So this was, you know, real roots exist if the discriminant is bigger than or equal to zero. Here it's saying, okay, there's two different intersection points. You know, there's two, well, not necessarily, because remember, it's a quadratic in t squared, not t, but there's two, you know, there's, there's definitely two real roots there of that equation we said. So if that's true, then the direction of projection can be chosen so that q strikes p before p is moved to distance d. Remember, p is the bottom particle. So can we find an expression for the distance p moves? Well, the absolute distance um, is just going to be as if it was traveling with acceleration a with with speed u is zero in terms of time that's just going to be a half a t squared that's just going to be the distance it moves with acceleration um, a and we want to show that this is less than d okay because if you know p has moved a distance you know before p has moved a distance d that 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 holds so that, then the projection of Q can be chosen so that Q strikes P before P is moved to distance D. Well, if that's true, then I guess, you know, at, at time T of collision, we want to show that. So we want to show that a half A T squared is less than D. So let's consider the equation that we had here. So we have some, some mass. Um, and we know that at some point, uh, what is the best way to do this, right? What do we think? Well, I guess we could consider the smallest t squared, right? Let's assume that both t squared are positive, both roots here are, are greater than zero, and let's consider the smallest one is going to be this one here. Okay. So that's going to be twice all of this over a squared. So that's your t squared. Yeesh. Okay. Well, multiply that by half a. And, and hopefully that expression will be less than d. So, multiplying it by half a, we get, well, I should have kept the half a in the bottom line, right? But, uh, yeah, we just, we just get phi over a minus the square root of phi squared minus a d all squared over a. Hmm. Hmm. Well, this sucks. Any ideas? You got any ideas, Emma? How do we solve this? Are you sure you have some time? Okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> what we could do is we could take the A inside the square root. Maybe that'll help. Minus d squared. Okay, so I'm just trying to show this is less than d. 
Josh? Where is Josh? Josh might be able to help me. Well, effectively, what am I trying to do here? I'm trying to show that I minus, well, let's multiply across by A, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll have some ideas. Instead of this, yeah, let's take this line and show that uh, phi squared minus like AD all squared is less than D. Does that make sense? Hmm. I bet you got A first, that's why I stopped. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I, I mean, I think it's true. Maybe it was just A to the power and ended up being half of it. Hmm. Because I think I got B on that. Did I finish it? You know you're on video, by the way. What? <laughs> you're not videoing me. You're well, not out, you. you. We can't see you, but yeah, you can hear you. <laughs> Okay, I'll cut it out, don't worry. <laughs> Me twittering in the background. <laughs> yeah, this is quite embarrassing because I'm stuck too. I don't really know how to proceed. Well. Hmm. I'm just trying to help you and just use every mic I can. <laughs> Not too much. <laughs> okay, I have an, another idea. What if we factored out AD? Would uh, maybe that would. Yeah, I think this is working. Okay. Um, yeah, wait. Yeah, I, mul I multiply across by A. This is AD less than AD. Okay, so I basically need to show. So let phi over AD equal X. You know, they're all just like constants at this point. So then I need to show that X minus the square root of X squared minus 1 is less than 1. Okay. Can we see why that's true? For all such um, positive x. Well, let's, let's, uh, I mean, I guess it would make sense. That makes a lot of sense, because the magnitude of this guy is, yeah, we see these are very close in magnitude, right? And in fact, if x is greater than 1, if we're assuming that phi is greater than ad, then this would hold. So the difference, and even if x is 1, this is 1. So if x is, if x for all x not 1, if x is positive, uh, well, x would need to be greater than 1, otherwise this imaginary and wouldn't really make much sense. So can we say of certainty that phi is greater than ad? That was a gamma. So is phi greater than AD? What do we what do we say phi was? Phi was this. Hmm. If we assume yes, I think we can say with certainty that this holds. Right? This clearly holds for all x greater than one, right? So in that case that sort of carries back, and we've got the other inequality there. I will redo this video at some point, but this question was very tricky. But yeah, I, I guess by, by virtue of fluid argument of, of sorts, <laughs> we, can, we can fudge an answer here. This one is tricky.